What is your favourite name for a fielding position? Uh, silly. Silly what? Silly Midon. Silly Midon. Okay. That's what you like the best, isn't it? Just things being yeah. called silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome to the first edition of our show. Uh, my son asks me a lot of questions about cricket, and to be honest, I find them very annoying. Thank you. And they never stop, and they go on forever. And eventually I said, why don't you just, I don't know, write them down, and then you can ask them on my YouTube channel. And so that's what we've done. Yeah. You're gonna start with your first of your questions. Yes. And the question is? Who comes up with the fielding position names? So my first question to you is, what is your favourite name for a fielding position? Uh, silly. Silly what? Silly Midon. Silly Midon, okay. No, that's a good one. Uh, silly Point is what most people go with, but do you know what? People don't usually field us at Silly Point all that much. It's dangerous, isn't it? It is very dangerous. Uh, when I started cricket, which was, uh, you know, a long time ago, I used to field at Silly Point without a helmet. Huh. And I once did it when someone um, hit 26 or 28 runs in and over. And the guy said to me, don't worry, I'll make sure I hit the sixes on the other side. It didn't make me feel any more comfortable, Ezekiel. All right, so uh, the fielding position names essentially came out of the late 1700s, early 1800s. Before that, almost everything in cricket was like, let's say you played with your friends in one area and someone else played with their friends in another area, yep. they would have different rules. So much so that there were like actually different laws of cricket in different parts of, of the UK and I think also in Scotland and Ireland. So everyone had their own sort of idea of what cricket was. And what happens in the late 1700s is there is a place called Hambledon. Have you ever heard of Hambledon? No, is it like rip-off Wimbledon? It is not a rip-off Wimbledon, but I like where your head's at there. So, Hambledon now is not a famous place at all, but in cricket, Hambledon is an incredibly important place because all the posh people would come down to watch the cricket at Hambledon. So they would come down mostly from London or they would come up from places like Brighton and they would watch cricket in Hambledon and that was the first place we started writing down everything. And what? Why not Lords? Well, that's it's a really interesting one, and I th and I'm not 100% sure how Hambledon gets so famous and Lords doesn't at that point. But what I do know is that they were gambling a lot in Hambledon. There was oh. a lot of money trans transpiring, and so when they were gambling a lot, people had to make sure that they got the uh, the, the 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 terminology and the laws and everything correct because otherwise people would be very upset. And so imagine. If you came from one part of England and someone came from the other part and you both played by different laws, you can't actually work out who's bet on what. So that is when they start to write the laws. And at the same stage they start to write the laws, they start to write about cricket in general. Oh, like the players, the stats, that kind all, of thing. All of that things. So, so um, you know, and we can do more of this sort of stuff on the podcast um, later on. But runs weren't originally called runs. What were they called? Notches. Notches. Because they used to notch them on a piece of wood. So it used to, you used to stuff, do stuff like that. So all the terminology that you know from cricket really comes from that period of cricket, which is the late 1700s. So more than, well more than 200 years ago, right? That which shows you how old cricket is. I saw your eyes go up there. You're trying to do the math. Um, it's a long time ago. And so the names in that period from about 1770 until about 1830, the names of fielding positions start to come up. So it isn't like there was one person who sat there coming up with them. Was that really? It was kind of the whole group. So no, it's it's no one person wrote the laws. Lots of different people wrote the laws, and lots of different people wrote all the different things, league before wicket, and all of that sort of stuff. And then the fielding positions. What's your favourite position to field in? Ooh, backward point. Why do you like to be at backward point? Because I'm usually there. So do you know why we put left handers at backward point? No. Because you're left-handed, right? Yes. We put left-handers at backward point because generally at backward point, you are throwing the ball towards the bowler's end. And, and you're left. And, and if you do that, If you do so right, you have to turn around. Yeah. So some of the greatest left-handed fielders of all time have fielded at point. And Sobers? Sobers fielded everywhere. But yes, he's one. But Chris Gale. Who's a, who's a modern great left-hander who might be at, at backward Travis point? Travis Hurst. Travis Head's not a very good fielder. Okay. I think Travis Head throws with his right arm, by the way. Let think about an Indian player who's left-handed. Ravi. Oh, or Ashwin. Nope. Oh. Very close. <laughs> I like how you... Ravi Jadeja feels a point. 
Right, so a lot of great left-handers have done that. Have you got any other questions about the fielding position? No. No. There's a lot, isn't there? Yes, there is. No. So, you know, there's no real pattern to the, the fielding positions other than we have some that are called off and some that are called on. And of course, if you're fielding too close, they're all called... Silly. Silly. Because it's silly to be there? Or... Yeah. That's what you like the best, isn't it? Just things being yeah. called silly. Yeah.